tell you what happened. It's all because of my bishop's wife, Mae Blake. I, my, I lost my grandmother. And I had never, I mean, that was devastating to me. So I had joined, I had just moved to LA, I had joined a church, and there was going to be a women's retreat. So I said, great, I need that. So I signed up for this retreat. And then one day, um, this call came, and it was Sister Mae Blake. And she said, Charlene, I saw you on Broadway in New York City, and I see that you're coming to our retreat. I would like for you to prepare some music for us for the first night of the retreat, uh, there, you know, just to entertain everyone while they're eating for, say, 20 minutes. I said, Sister Blake, I am in mourning. I can't perform. She says, I said, I just, and, and certainly I'm not going to sing, you know, anything. I just can't even think of what to sing. I'm in mourning. And she goes, I'm sure you think of something, shall I? There it is. Someone has given me a challenge. Someone has said, go forward. Here I was bathing in my mourning. And someone said, come on out of that and go forward. You know, and I listened to those kind of things. I was listening, and I said, okay, what else can I do? Because I cannot sing, you know. I just couldn't find that joy. All I could think of was my grandmother. And my husband said, my new husband said to me, well, why don't you talk about your grandmother? And I told a story about what makes me an, a performer, what makes me an, a, an actor. And it has everything to do with my grandmother. She started this whole thing when I was 12 years old. She initiated it. And um, so in telling that story, uh, on the night of the, you know, when I first got there, I get there, I did not know, you know, this is a mega church, but I didn't know what that meant. There we were at a hotel in Irvine, California. I thought we were going to be in the, in the woods somewhere, Arrowhead or something. I didn't know where I was going, but I got in my car and drove down the freeway to Irvine. And it was like 450 women. And that night when I walked into the place where I, I thought I would tell this little story, it was a, like a 10 minute, 20 minute story. Um, 450 women at circular cha tables. And I was freaked out, you know. When they were introducing me, uh, my heart was going boom, 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 boom. I'd never stood up in front of anyone and told a story. And I thought it would be just a little bunch of 50 women sitting around, hmm, her grandmother. In order to get up, I had to sing my grandmother's hymn. So I sang that to get up from my seat to the, the, the platform that I was speaking from. And as I'm singing this song, the 450 women joined in. So by the time I started with my first line, <laughs> I was like in the groove. <laughs> because, you know, I was just in the groove and I told this story that was very personal to me. And I saw those women wave their napkins and stand up and there were sections that I put in there that were songs, just a few bars from this junior choir I sang in. Those 450 women knew every song. They sang with me. They, uh, 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 they, I, I had not, I lived the story. I did not tell the story. I lived it. It was a visceral experience. And it was coming between both, all of us. There were no lights out or anything. I could see them all. They were spurring me on this this story lasted 35 minutes, and it was the very best experience I had ever had in the theater in my entire life up to that time. It was the most honest and true thing, and it was give and take, and it wasn't a solo thing. It was a duet between me and all those 450 women, and a very personal experience. I realized the more personal it is, the more universal it is. And when that was done, Huh. I had a story. I had a night of theater. To me, I knew it. And I knew if I added four more stories, we'd have a play. 